Timber, I'll carry two. 12 yard plates. Blade of brass, 124. Kimber Ultra Carry 2 9mm versus STI Electra, also 9mm. Another one of those videos where we're comparing a pair of guns that have substantially different price tags on them but uh, are functionally about the same. There are some differences though, we're going to talk about them here on Rider's Range. I want to welcome you to part 22 of the Great Affordable 1911 series. And this will be the final part to this series. All right, so the Kimber Ultra Carry 2 3 inch barrel officer size frame STI Electra 3 inch barrel officer size frame. 9 millimeter, both of them. Uh, Kimber is still in the catalog. The stainless Ultra Carry 2 is uh, still listed for yeah, a little north of $900, although the new one comes with a, uh, a red fiber optic front sight. Uh, I'm not sure if you can still get them in the Kimber catalog with just the plain black sight, so we'll talk about here in just a minute. The STI, however, no longer has any metal frame 1911s in their catalog. They've gone all to the uh, modular 2011 style frame, single end double stack. We did a video on the uh, STI, actually we've done a couple of videos on the STI Staccato C, which is uh, a 1911-ish, but uh, it's with the, um, the modular frame. So they don't make this uh, particular gun anymore, and um, for a while I get a Occasionally find these uh, on gun broker still new um, but lately I have not found any I did a search right before we recorded this video and I don't find anything new or used for the Electra now when STI originally had this in the catalog it was about a $1,300 gun and uh, you could also get this in three flavors you could get them in black with the uh, the black pearl type grips here and uh, black fill on the cocking serrations you could also get them in pink and I believe purple. And the reason for that is, is this was marketed more toward um, the uh, trying to get more females uh, interested in the, the 1911 platform. It was a uh, STI was going after that uh, demographic and certainly uh, a laudable in the way they, they did it. And that's why this has a short trigger as opposed to the long trigger on most of the other guns. In fact, uh, there's only a couple of guns that I've, a couple of 1911s I have that have the short trigger. Um, which is actually how the 1911A1 style came out. We'll talk more about the trigger in just a minute. So this was marketed toward uh, that demographic, but it still works extremely well. That's why I made sure I got this in black. Uh, I, I'm not going to carry a pink or a purple STI on the street. I did carry this, and that's why you'll see some uh, some marks on the uh, on the highly polished slide sides on this gun. All right, Kimber. 900, and, 900 plus in the catalog, um, 7 to 750 new and surprisingly 7 to 750 used for uh, this particular gun. Uh, nice gun, differences between the two though. I'll uh, start with the, the slide. Stainless Ultra Carry 2, no front cocking serrations, um, typical rear cocking serrations, stainless steel slide, aluminum frame by the way. Uh, Kimber marking on uh, this side. Uh, it's not melted for carry or anything. Again, this is their pretty much their entry level type of gun. Slide on the uh, STI, black on the top, polished on the sides, and again, it's definitely got some some character marks on them from uh, carrying this gun quite a bit. Uh, STI logo on the the right side, and the controversial area that could be on this particular gun is the the cocking serrations. These are very aggressive, by the way. They're uh, there's no slipping on the hand, by the way. These guns have been safety inspected are and are unloaded for this part of the video. Um, but in addition to the polished sides, black fill on the cocking serrations, black on the top, you notice that there is a groove running down the uh, the top of the channel on the slide. It does. Uh, there we go. It's a better shot in the video, and that uh, allows for a slightly lower sight profile which is interesting with the sights. When you put these two guns side by side, you'll see that the front sight on the STI is substantially lower than the front sight on the Kimber. And even though they have the same basic style sights, the Heine uh, rear sight on the STI is also a little bit lower. So that's what that channel helps facilitate a lower, uh, a slightly lower sight uh, pattern for carrying. And as long as we're on the sights, the uh, let's see, the STI has a has a Trigicon tritium front sight, and it's a Heine Trigicon straight eight rear sight. I do like the sights 
on the STI. I mean, my preference for accurate shooting is all black, but this is the next best thing to it. And for me, the best thing for night shooting is that straight eight sight pattern. Love the sights on that gun. Oh, something a little different on this too. You notice that there's no dovetail on the front sight. This actually dovetails in from the um, front of the frame and is uh, held in place by a real small set screw there. Different than uh, what you see on most guns. Whereas the rear is a, uh, a standard uh, uh, Heine Dawson type. Rear sight. Kimber, on the other hand, plain black front sight, plain black rear sight, Dawson type. Kimber's own proprietary slide cuts, I'm presuming. And this one is uh, dovetailed in the front. And uh, these are adjustable, uh, drift adjustable for windage on, uh, on both guns. And for precision, my, my favorite black on black sights, uh, although it didn't seem to be quite as precise with this particular gun. Let's see, we mentioned the short trigger versus long trigger, and this, this particular gun has been cleared also. Uh, as long as we're talking about the trigger, there's a plastic face, which is a typical STI uh, me method of doing their triggers. I've got a number of STIs. You've seen other, uh, uh, other STI videos. We'll put one of them up here for you to, to uh, click on if you want to look at a couple of other STIs. Uh, I've never had a problem with it. It's adjustable for over travel. I, my only issue on this is the fact that it's a short trigger. Plastic, I don't care about. Uh, it still works. No up and down play. Very nicely fitted. And very little take up. No creep. No over travel. And very, very short reset only complaint about this and the trigger doesn't feel quite as light as it is although it's not all that light at four pounds 14 ounces so it, functionally it's a good trigger just not quite what I would expect out of a, a gun in the 14 13 or 1400 dollar price range Kimber on the other hand has typical medium length trigger a little bit of take up just a hair up and down play, not a lot, and I believe this is a mimmed part. And okay, uh, for Kimber haters, I know. Um, metal injection molding for the trigger, the um, uh, thumb safety, and a uh, couple of other parts on this. Uh, I have never had one break. All right, a little bit of take up. A little bit of glitch in the trigger. You can feel it right there. There's just a little bit of a catch, but a clean break. But quite a bit of reset more so than I get out of the STI. Although this thing is pretty consistent at four pounds, four ounces, so it's about 10 ounces lighter in the trigger pull than it is for the uh, Electra. Um, the trigger works fine on this. Again, that, uh, any accuracy issues are not the fault of the trigger. Uh, let's see, what else on this? The slide, excuse me, the magazine release uh, is substantially different on both of these. On the STI, it is not very pronounced and it's just a round button with an indentation in the middle. Makes it a little more difficult to drop a magazine out of the STI. Kimber is a very much uh, uh, more pronounced, uh, more protruding magazine release and it is checkered which um, definitely facilitates dropping a magazine. Uh, I've done speed loading or speed reloading with both of these guns and uh, that hasn't presented a problem, particularly if I'm using the, the slim grips and these are very slim. Although, um, I'll put a picture up here as to what I really normally carry this with. Uh, I like the uh, Stoner CNC Starburst grips and um, you'll uh, you probably remember those from part 21 in the series which is the uh, Dan Wesson ECO which happens to be my, my everyday carry gun and that's what I'll put back on this after this video is over and I'll put these back in the box so they stay in good shape uh, grips on the uh, Kimber are these are the wooden grips that uh, that came from the the factory and you'll notice in the the video we did a comparison on uh, this with uh, uh, this and the Kimber Micro 9 and very similar guns in a lot of ways uh, and that uh, when I did that video I had uh, some uh, cool hand G10 grips on it and uh, if I were to be carrying this again I would put the cool hands back on it I like them uh, better than the these rosewood although the rosewood uh, nice grips with uh, with good texture uh, I just like the uh, G10s better front strap on the Kimber uh, I put skateboard tape on it because it is smooth whereas the STI comes with a chain link front and uh, much nicer 
grip than than uh, what you see on the the Kimber uh, back on the, on the back strap the Kimber yes it's a plastic mainspring housing uh, but it is checkered on the Kimber and uh, it's chain link on the uh, on the STI um, neither of these has my my favorite feature on it just a very slight rounding on the STI and no rounding at all it's just a straight cut on the Kimber neither of these has my favorite feature of the rounded mainspring housing uh, that you get not a real bobtail but on the uh, on the officer size frame on the Dan Wesson ECO probably my main objection to the uh, uh, STI for a carry gun or the Kimber for that matter is that's not rounded uh, grip safety is uh, but they got a memory bump or a speed bump, whatever you want to call it, on the STI, and it's also um, squared off beaver tail, which might present an issue in uh, in printing a little more when you carry it. Whereas the the beaver tail on the uh, on the Kimber is more rounded, uh, doesn't have the memory bump, but it, it does flare out just a little bit, and I've never had a problem with uh, not being able to, uh, to get that grip safety in uh, in proper position. Fit and finish on, or fit anyway, on the grip safety. Uh, there close uh, it's a little better fitted as you would expect out of a gun in this price range on the STI not quite as well fitted on the Kimber but it doesn't have any uh, any snags or protrusions doesn't cause any blisters there uh, the thumb safeties are about the same on them they're in fact they're almost identical the slide stop lever is uh, checkered on the Kimber is just uh, got star striations on the uh, on the S on the Electra, uh, both just as functional. Matter of preference. The STI is probably just a little bit better uh, fitted than the Kimber, but not a lot. The extractor to um, slide fit is very very nicely done. Slide to frame fit on the right side is very nice. Uh, ejector to um, slide on the left side is very nice. Slide to frame is also very very nice on it. Kimber, you can feel just a slight difference as you run uh, your hand over the uh, extractor, uh, but again a decent uh, decent slide to, or yeah, extractor to slide fit, decent slide to frame fit. Well, again you can feel just a little bit of a variance there. Uh, ejector to slide is pretty good, not quite as good as the STI. So the fit on the STI is just a little bit better. Same thing with the the barrel. You'll notice the uh, the uh, guide rod and the guide rod bushing are almost flush with the front of the frame. The barrel does protrude just a little bit on the STI, and you get a little more protrusion of the uh, the guide rod bushing on the the Kimber. Both of these, by the way, are bull barrel guns, as is typical of your three inch 1911 style guns. So they require a little different takedown than your typical 1911. Difference in uh, in how they uh, have machined the the barrels. Um, I think that the uh, Kimber was probably a little less maintenance and uh, or less manufacturing intensive just because of the square cut on it. Uh, the the taper on the STI probably takes a little bit more machining, um, but they're that's aesthetics, not function. They both seem to work just as well. Both of these are ramped barrels, as is typical of your 1911 9mm, and both work well. Although you'll uh, notice in the, uh, the video where we compared this with the Micro 9, I did have a couple of hang ups with Federal Ammunition. I bet I've got well over 500 rounds through this gun, uh, a lot of it with the Federal uh, HST 124 grain using Kimber and Wilson magazines and even uh, Trip Research and Chip McCormick. Never had a problem with it until those couple of Federals and uh, just don't know why that happened. Uh, unusual for ball ammunition but other than that this gun has been 100% reliable. I probably got better than 500 rounds through the uh, Electra and never ever had a hang up with it of any kind. Let's see anything else we can tell you about the guns here. Oh uh, Magwell there's no additional magwell on it, but the beveling on the uh, on the frame for the Kimber is just a little bit more pronounced than the beveling on the uh, the magwell area for the uh, the STI. Again, in speed loading, I haven't had any any issues with them one way or the other. The guns are pretty close in weight. You'll notice that the Electra comes in at 30.1 ounces versus the Kimber's 31. 
that is with a magazine with eight rounds of 124 grain ammunition uh, plus one more for the chamber and again if you go back to the other uh, the earlier video with the Kimber you see that was 31.2 that had different grips on it and I think the G10 grips weigh just a hair more than the the wooden grips uh, I can only guess that's what accounts for the uh, two cents of an ounce difference in in the weight so the Kimber has an advantage for price um, but again it's a it's a bare bones gun plain sights no uh, texturing on the front strap at all uh, does have nice rosewood grips on it does have mim parts plastic parts but it's a good functional gun and again I carried that gun for quite a while uh, STI Electra on the other hand um, if you can find a pick one or a purple one if that's what you want go for it um, it uh, it does have some features that the the Kimber doesn't have and again for the the price one would expect it it uh, comes with, uh, with about everything that I would like to have in a gun I would like to have the longer trigger but again this is uh, designed for a, a different demographic if I were to turn this into my only daily carry I would probably put a medium length trigger in that but even with a short one it works and how well do they work? You'll notice at uh, 15 yards the, the Kimber seemed to group fairly well but it was grouping more to the left and that was also the case in the original video. Now that's okay for combat distances, it's fine. You can see when I ran the plates at 12 yards um, I didn't have any misses with the, uh, the Kimber other than a couple of hang-ups in that one video. Uh, and the uh, Electra seems to group just a little bit looser uh, at 15 yards on that 3 inch bullseye. It ran the plates just fine and the Electra was actually better at 25 yards and even at 50 yards. Uh, I stumbled with uh, the Kimber at uh, 25 and 50 yards. The fact that it was shooting a little bit to the left might have something to do with it, but uh, in every uh, time I've taken this to the range and tried to do 50 yards, the Kimber has not worked quite as well as the STI Electra. If you're looking at a, uh, at a compact gun, the Kimber is going to work just fine, uh, but the Electra is, um, it's got some nice features, but it's also a little pricey. So if uh, price is the uh, the issue, Kimber is going to be fine. If price is not the issue, for the uh, Electra, it's a, it's a different type of uh, compact carry gun um, with the uh, uh, the the uh, cocking serrations, the uh, the fact that the grip safety and the thumb safety are uh, are a uh, stainless type finish, um, but it has a lot of nice features for the price. So um, advantage one way or the other depends on what you're willing to pay and what you like. Uh, they're they're both good functional guns. This wraps up the great affordable 1911 series. This was part 22 in our 22 part series. You can see what's uh, been posted so far and also what's coming up by going to our website www.ridersrange.com and we appreciate comments on this video and drop them in the comment section below and comments on anything else send an email to info at ridersrange.com. If you like this video we certainly appreciate a thumbs up. If you like Riders Range videos in general by all means uh, subscribe, click on notifications so you know what's coming up. So I want to thank you for visiting Riders Range. STI Electra 12 yard plates, 124 grain blazer brides.